something big performance wise for this car something i bought off a subscriber something a little bit differently here something cool with the interior some more mountain stuff more mountain badges can never be a bad thing well that's disappointing I was meant to have a really big handling upgrade for you guys this week, but unfortunately, because of the weather and because of time constraints, I haven't been able to get that done. It's currently Saturday afternoon, and the mod that I did have to show you this week is done. It's all installed, but I am going to need to get the car aligned before I can really show you how good it's actually going to be. So it's going to have to wait till next week because we were up until about two o'clock in the morning finishing this off, which just meant I couldn't get up early enough this morning to get this somewhere to get an alignment done and test out what I've installed. But you will see that next week. I promise. But what I've got for you this week is just some little additions that maybe don't warrant their own video, but they're things that I want to get on the car and I want to share with you guys. So we're going to get all of those done in this video. And we're starting off with this. This is another delivery that I've got from UNA Performance. They sent this out to me. I'll show you what it is in just a second. But just to recap, UNA Performance are the ones that sent me out this digital clock a little while ago, which we've used in quite a few videos because not only is it a clock, it's also, as you can see here, a temperature sensor. And if you saw a couple of videos ago, we also used it to monitor the battery voltage. So that is awesome. They sent me that out a little while ago. And now, we have teamed up again and they've sent me something else to fit on my car and this time it's for the outside so this time they've sent me out some smoked led dynamic side repeaters to replace these horrible old things they reached out to me and said look we want to send you these because we think they look really good with the car in place of these clear ones so we're going to get these out because these are all full of water i've tried to reseal these a couple of times but it's just not worked so we're going to get these out get these in and then i'll show you what they're looking like so these are just clipped in here and the original should pop out just with a little bit a pry in, I'll just use a plastic pry tool so as not to damage the wrap. And also you wouldn't want to damage your paintwork if your car's painted like they normally are, but mine's wrapped obviously. And then just paying attention to which way around these go. So there's like a little tab here, which is what you need to press against to pop these out. And then this side, it's almost like little plastic hooks which dig in this side. So you need to pry from the back here to pop these out. And as you can see, that's been replicated on these ones. There's a little tab here, which you need to pry against. And then the little hooks at the back, which hook in up front. I'm thinking that's the way around they go anyway. I'm just going to plug these in and check because I think, because I said these are dynamic, they're meant to go front to back. I think that's the right way around. I mean, it doesn't really matter which way around you put them, but I think the right way is to come front to back as these sort of flash so uh i'm gonna test that first before i hook these in because una told me that once these are in they are actually quite hard to get out so let's remove the old one just by twisting this bulb holder and then pulling that off now i'll need to remove the bulb because the new one plugs into where the original bulb goes so we'll plug that in there and i'm just going to test these and check that they're working i am going to remove this film obviously but i just want to test them first there we go Awesome, yeah, and they are going the way I thought. So yeah, this tab's still at the back, a little hook things at the front, and they flash front to back like that. But before I clip this in, I'm just gonna unplug this briefly and slip this heat shrink that's supplied with them over the wires because a lot of water can get in behind here and you just wanna protect all this wire in. So they actually supply your heat shrink just to stop that happening. Okay, yeah, so I just cut this down ever so slightly. And then I'm just going to use a heat gun to shrink that down and protect that connection. Now it's not going to be able to shrink down all the way to these wires because obviously this pit's quite thick and this is quite thin here. So you're not going to be able to get it to seal completely, but at least it's going to sort of protect that area there and stop, you know, moisture and stuff getting into the connection. So uh, let's get these plugged in then. Okay, so let's pop this in, just using these clips on the front to hook in behind the wing and then popping that tab in behind there and there we go that's in so now we can remove this protective film and there we go that looks awesome they look so much better than the clear ones i'm so happy with that let's see how they look with the indicator on oh yeah that's so much better Yeah, the black really suits, like it just looks so good against like the wheel and with all the like the tints on the back and the, the wind deflectors and the sun strips, the painted headlights, the gloss black on the front, like it just looks so good. I know you're all going to tell me that I need gloss black wheels, but I've already been over this, don't like gloss black wheels, but 
Those indicators, awesome. So thank you very much to UNA Performance for sending those out to me. Guys, if you want a set of these, go and grab yourself some. I think they're available to pre-order on the website. He hasn't actually got full stock of them yet, but if you go on their website, I'll leave a link in the description and a link in the top corner so you can go grab them if you guys want a set. You guys went mad last time with the clock, so I'm hoping you're gonna do the same again here. Support the people that support this channel and go and get yourself a set of these or something else off their website. They sell all sorts of really cool stuff. They even sell turbo kits, which I'd love to get my hands on one day, and we are working on something big performance wise for this car with UNA Performance so that will be coming up in the future but thanks once again UNA Performance I really appreciate you sending those out to me right on to the next little thing and the next little thing is just something I've had lying around in my shed for a few months it's a mist washer jet it's nothing too exciting but it basically will go from this to this well, that's disappointing. I guess maybe the pump's just not strong enough or something like that because it's probably the original pump that's in the car. I'm not really going to dive into it today. I think possibly I can try and clean the pump out just so we can get it a bit stronger. If not, I might have to order another one or I believe you can get like an upgraded one or, a, you know, just one off a different model because I think the Focus Mark II, I'm guessing, comes with mist washer jet. So it's probably got a more powerful pump and I think you can fit those in these. Someone let me know, but... I'll have a go at it and see if I can get this one working. But for now, let's move on to the next thing. And the next thing is something for the interior. And what I've got is something I bought off a subscriber, an aluminium M-Tech gear knob. And I got this from Roger Andrews. So thank you very much, Roger, for hooking me up with this. So let's get it fitted. So it is literally just a case of removing the rubber boot, unscrewing the old one, and the new one just threads in there. You do have to push these down when you thread them on, which I didn't realize at first, because there's a little rubber bung in there that's just meant to create a little bit of resistance so that it screws on nice and tightly, but it won't just thread on. You do have to push it down a little bit first. It doesn't screw on very far until it's tight, but that's on there. And then we can just hook the rubber boot back on. And there we go, done. And I've just watched that back and yes, I've noticed my rubber boot is split. So I will be replacing that at some point now. I was thinking of just going for a new gator for this and maybe one for the handbrake as well. But I've seen something else that I'm actually wanting to do that I think would tie in really nicely with this aluminium gear knob. Just so you know, the design on this, you've got the gears on there and the little ST logo as well. You can get different designs for this. This is actually the one I wanted. So it was just kind of fortunate this is the one Roger had, but uh, yeah. I'm not so sure. I don't know if I just want to get like a leather or an Alcantara gator for this or whether I want to do something a little bit differently here. So I've got a plan for something coming for that, but I'm not going to be able to get that done today, unfortunately. One thing I will say just quickly for the M-Tech gear knob now, just for the video, I did put the old one back on just so I could take it off and fit the M-Tech one again. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. And as well as how it looks like, Maybe it's just a placebo thing, but I actually genuinely feel like the car shifts nicer with the, the new gear knob. I think it's because it's weighted and it just does feel, you know, a little bit nicer. You can't even see that, but it does just feel a little bit nicer when you're going into gears because of the, the weight of the knob, I think. I think that's what it is anyway. Now, when I first showed Ash this, he was like, oh no, I don't really like them. I let him drive the car for about half an hour and he's now gone and bought one. So they, you know, they somehow they make it feel nicer to drive. I don't know, like I say, it might be a placebo thing, but. It's definitely a winner in my book. And that's not the only thing that Roger hooked me up with. He also hooked me up with these. Yeah, that's right. We got some more Mountune stuff. We got Mountune floor mats, brand new. Luckily, Roger grabbed a spare set last time he saw them come into stock on the Mountune website. He's already got them in his car, but he just picked these up as a spare because they are in stock from time to time, but there's a lot of the times you can't get these. So I'm super happy that he was happy to part with them and sell them to me. Oh, and I'm not looking for any sort of sympathy here, but I just know someone's going to ask. Yes, I've broken one of my fingers, so that's why it's taped up like this. But maybe that is partly the reason why we've not got such an interesting video for you today. I can't be doing too much manual work with that, but I'm sure it'll be sorted soon. But I have got a good video for you next week promise. I know I said it earlier, but this is actually a couple of days later than when I said it earlier in this video. And it's all done now and it's all tracked and all that sorted. So that is definitely coming out here next week. And as well as the mats themselves, Roger also had a spare set of the little clips that go underneath the driver's seat to hold the mat in place and stop it from sliding around. So let's get the old mat out of the way. Ignore the hideous carpet. And then if you're not quite sure what these clips are actually for, if you look in the carpet here, there's two little cutouts. And then inside there, there's a little rectangular hole which this piece should slot into. So you'll kind of put it in and twist, I'm guessing. And then this little bit here goes through the mats and holds them in place. And then the new mount tube mat can go in. And then those little tabs just poke through the holes 
and twist to lock in place. That looks so much better. Then I can get the back ones in. And then finally, we can swap out the passenger mat for the mounting one as well. Lovely. Now, I know they're just a set of mats with a mounting logo on and some yellow stitching, but like, it does just look so much better in here already. I do think we need a little bit more yellow now though to go with the badges. So maybe I can do something cool with the interior, maybe get some yellow bits in here. Cause I do think that would look really nice with the mounting floor mats. But like I said, I have got something coming for here. Instead of this, maybe we can incorporate some yellow into here somewhere. We'll see. So yeah, super happy with those. And once again, Roger, thank you very much for hooking me up with those. I really appreciate it. But that's not the last mountain badges that are going in the car today. Those of you that saw the video of me fitting the white line rear anti roll bar will know that when we picked it up, we also picked up a mountain boot mat secondhand from Joe Linden. So let's get rid of the original and then get the mountain boot mat in here. Now this should be near enough a perfect fit. But you know what? That sand ending's got to go. Let's get that out of here. There we go. That looks spot on. I'm loving that. So yeah, okay. It's just a few more mats and stuff, but more mountain badges can never be a bad thing. Oh, and just quickly as well, who remembers the rear light fix that we did on this where I put some closed cell foam on the inside of the rear lights to stop the boot leaking? Well, a lot of people ask about it and ask how it's holding up. And just to let you guys know, it is still perfect. The boot has not got wet ever since. So definitely a good thing to go and check out if you've got a leaky boot. I'll leave a link in the top corner. And then I've just got one last little thing to finish off this video. Those of you that watched my recent video where we compared the Mountain CAIS to the factory airbox and a Ram Air cone filter may very well have noticed this funny little piece of plastic hanging out on the top of the rocker cover here. Wondering what that is? Well, that was just a test that the heat from the engine isn't going to damage this new custom ST150 badge that I've got to go on top of the engine cover. It's basically the same as my ST150 badge I've got on the boot, but this one has a layer of clear red acrylic as well as the black on top. I just thought that the additional red layer would contrast really nicely with the black engine cover. So let's get this stuck on. I'm thinking down here in the bottom right hand corner. So there we go. That is stuck on there and it is looking awesome oh and if you're wondering why this area here looks a bit different to the rest of it it's just because i wiped this down with some panel prep just so i got a nice clean surface so this would adhere so now this is firmly stuck down let's give this last little coat of the silly shine and then after a quick wipe that is looking awesome there you go that looks so good i think it contrasts really well against that engine cover because depending on what angle you look at it it changes see like there you can't really notice it so much. And then as you change angles, it just really stands out. Like that looks awesome. And part of me's kind of wishing I'd gone with yellow just so it would match this and the mounting badge and everything. But still, I think that looks mega and that badge was made for me by am plates who are the same guys that made my custom show plates which hopefully now the weather's starting to look up will get to come out again pretty soon so if you guys are looking for some custom plates signs road plates badges anything made out of acrylic then go check out am plates i'll leave a link in the description and like i just said as you can see the weather is starting to improve now so hopefully we can crack on and get a few more big mods done to this car which like i've said a few times already in this video I've got a big mod coming for you next week. It's a suspension upgrade, handling upgrade, whatever you want to call it. It's already on the car. The video is pretty much ready to go. So that is coming at you next week. And if you don't want to miss that, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. But for this video, it is time to end. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.